Hey guys, Garrick here. So, one of my uh, recurring projects, one of the things that I'm, I'm doing on a fairly regular basis, is I work with the Daft Punk cover band uh, called One More Time. And uh, the big finale to their show is they have replicated the uh, Alive Tour EL jackets from Daft Punk along with the pyramid stage, lights, you know, the whole nine yards. Um, so while I did not create these jackets originally, I have been doing all of the maintenance on the EL work uh, since they've started touring. Now they go all over the country and touring is hard on anything, but it's especially hard on EL. Um, your solder joints start to bend and break the EL itself will start to break down because at the center of each strand of EL is a solid copper core. So the more you bend that piece of copper, the more likely you are to get a break in it. So whenever they come back on tour, I get all the jackets and I go through and replace any of the lines that are out. Um, I go back and double check all of the solder joints, make sure that none of them have uh, come apart. And in the countless hours that I've done that, I've come across uh, some shortcuts and some techniques to make those joints last longer and work better. And uh, that's what I'm going to share with you guys today, a great way to solder your EL wire together. So uh, I'm just going to switch camera views here so you can see what I'm doing. Alright, before we get started, let's talk about the anatomy on a piece of EL wire. Now, all EL wire, regardless of color, is built this same way. First, you have the outer PVC sleeve. Then you have an inner PVC sleeve. Then you have your angel hair wire, which if it'll focus on that. That is where most of your solder problems come. That wire is so thin, it's very difficult to get a strong solder joint to it. Next, you have your phosphorus coating which that is what actually glows when the currents run through it. And finally, when you scrape away the phosphorus coating, you have the copper core. And that is the other place where you will be making a solder joint. Now, the tools that you need to complete this project are fairly simple, easy to get. Um, firstly, you need wire cutters. Um, you need an X-Acto knife to scrape away that phosphorus from the copper core. Uh, you need solder, of course. I use a 6040 rosin core solder that I just pick up at the Radio Shack down by my house. It works like a charm. Um, electrical tape. Now, the most people know using shrink tubing it makes for better and stronger joints. And in a normal situation, I agree with you completely. I happen to do a lot of work on pieces of clothing. And a lot of times, it is not a good idea to use a heat gun on something that's made out of synthetic materials, something that's going to char or burn. Um, so I end up having to use electrical tape instead. Um, so you just have to be thorough and clean. Um, use a pair of scissors to cut your electrical tape instead of trying to tear it and smaller pieces more often is better than a big long strip wrapped up in some clumsy fashion. Uh, you of course are going to need a soldering iron. I have a nice little Weller uh, base station right there. Uh, adjustable temperature, uh, nothing too fancy. Um, you can even get away with just the soldering irons that plug straight into the wall. You don't need something super fancy for this. And finally, the piece that makes it easier and stronger to solder EL wire, copper tape. Now, I got this off of eBay. It's quarter inch copper tape with a conductive adhesive along the back. And this is what allows us to make really strong solder joints to those angel hair wires. Um, so I'm going to walk you through the steps here on how I do that. Bring this, this up. And 
Now, I've already scraped the phosphorus off of that. It's probably not going to get much better. Sorry, guys. Autofocus wise. Um, so I'm going to tin my copper, and that's just a process of putting a little bit of solder on it to make the joint stronger. So I've got that tinned. The next thing I'm going to do is cut a small piece of the copper tape. So about, oh yay big. What you're gonna do, you're going to place this right like so, right below where that angel hair wire is. You're gonna fold that wire down onto the tape. You're gonna come back and do a dollop of solder on it to keep it in place. Now you have to be careful, because as you can see, the tape started shifting on me. The heat loosens the adhesive up, but it cools really quickly. So it's not gonna go anywhere. And then I just finish wrapping the tape around that joint. Now, many times when you order EL online, you are going to get, oops, I knocked that all over the place. You're gonna get something that comes with connectors. They're gonna be something like that, or something like that. Um, these are passable, they're very usable. Uh, I tend to use my own wires and do all of my own solder joints because I don't make a lot of things that have to come apart. But if you have to have sections that uh, break apart, uh, maybe you've got a glove that you want to light up and you want to be able to take it off the jacket. Uh, these joints work fine. Um, but I just have some regular wire that I am going to work my magic on. Did I really just say that out loud? Ugh. Ignore that part. So just like we tinned the top copper, I'm going to tin this, uh, this copper right here, get a little bit of solder on it. There we go. Again, you want to give that a second to cool down. Um, you don't want to melt through that plastic sheath. You don't want this uh, piece of copper to start sliding around anywhere. It can become a real pain in the ass. But, ass butt. Sorry if I offended anybody with my ass butt comment. Okay. So. What I'm going to do now. Wrap that like so. If you have these helping hands, these little alligator clip guys. Um, let me move it out so you can see. These, you can get these at Harbor Freight for like five bucks. They are a immense help. I would highly suggest getting them for doing this because you really need four hands. So as you can see, I have the piece of wire wrapped over that solder joint. And come back in. Now, what you want to do is you want to heat the wire so it becomes hot enough to melt the solder instead of just melting the solder directly onto it. That's going to make a stronger joint than just blobbing melted solder onto the piece. So there's that one. I said give that a second to cool. And 
then now Now the top piece. Oh, what a pain. Sorry that you're getting a big old picture of my hand, but I don't really have a better way to situate this right now. It's wrapped around there. And again, I'm heating the back of the wire and putting the solder up front. The whole piece gets heated. Okay. out here. Not exactly the prettiest thing in the world, but you get the idea. Now of course we have to power it. Um, EL wire is run off of AC current, alternating current. Batteries provide a DC current. So if I want to power my piece of EL off of a 9 volt battery, I need what's called an inverter. Um, I like to use 9 volts. Uh, they seem to put out enough power to get good long lines going on costumes. Uh, you can find inverters that run off of practically any battery combination out there, or big fancy ones that plug directly into a wall. As you can see, this one does off blink and full. I have the ends stripped. This is one of my uh, tester pieces. Sorry about that, my uh, battery decided to die while I was recording that video. So, uh, as I was saying, uh, AC current, you need the inverter. The nice part about that is there is no uh, polarity, there's no positive or negative uh, when you're doing your wiring. So all you have to concern yourself with is making sure that you don't short the circuit out. Um, the other thing that you can do uh, is called daisy chaining, which is where you wire the power source into an end of EL, you make a joint, you run it to the other end, and then I could solder in pieces of wire down here, run them to another part of the costume, and then do another length of EL there, and it would work fine. And like I said, because you're not worrying about negative and positive, uh, you're not, um, it just makes your entire job much more simple. But anyways, as you can see, it goes! Um, this is definitely much more reddish-orange in real life than it is on camera. Uh, note about the color. EL uh, only comes in two natural colors. They have one that, that is called aqua or natural or anything, and it is white when it's off and a aqua, you know, marine blue when it's on. Um, something similar to the color of that, the scissor handles. And then they have another kind that's called white on pink off, which is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, any other color of EL is achieved by putting a tinted plastic sheet, sheet, sheath, tubing, whatever you want to call it, uh, over the top of it. Um, so because of that, the white on pink off and the natural will be your brightest ELs. 
Um, EL also tends to come in a couple of different diameters. Uh, when they talk about that, they're talking about the diameter of the copper core. Now, the thinner copper core is more subject to breakage, which is the one major drawback of working with EL. Now, depending upon how the wire was manufactured, you can have better or worse quality when it comes to this, uh, this drawback. Um, the wire that I buy is from a website called Alumaglow, and I'll put a link either in the description or somewhere on this page. Um, I don't get paid by them or anything. They probably have no idea who I am. Um, but they uh, get their EL wire from Germany, and the copper has some silver blended into it, which allows it to be more malleable. And uh, I have got the cheaper EL out of China before and have had nothing but problems with it breaking or I've even had entire pieces not work. So um, I've been really happy with Alumaglow. I'd highly suggest uh, picking up your, your wire from them. And uh, let me guys know uh, how you like this tutorial, if there's anything that you think I could change up doing future things. Um, this was a lot of up-close work, and I'm not really situated audiovisual wise to do anything besides the camera directly in front of me routine. But uh, if you liked it, if you thought it was uh, informative, please subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel here. Give me the thumbs up. Um, if you'd like to see more things that my wife and I do, uh, you can visit us at noonesdesigns.com and uh, No One's Designs uh, just on Facebook. Search it on Facebook, you know, or, or on Google. We're, we're on the Googles. Um, anyways, uh, if you have any questions, uh, anything that I forgot to cover, um, please ask me in the comments below or shoot me a message, um, either email or on Facebook, and I will, uh, I'll try to get back to them. Uh, hope you enjoyed, and get out there and make something.